Capitol Hill has a new report out suggesting that PFAS, also known as forever chemicals, may be linked to breast and gynecological cancers. PFAS is a class of chemicals that have been found in everyday consumer products like cookware, including Teflon pans, waterproof apparel, cosmetics, and stain removers. While sci scientists have found evidence that exposure to these chemicals can lead to adverse health outcomes, including testicular and other cancers, finding a link to gynecological cancers has proven difficult. Now in Roundup, which is a popular weed killer used to do exactly that, has also been linked to cancer. Chemical giant Bayer, which produces Roundup, was forced to settle to the tune of 10.9 billion with a B dollars to victims of the gardening agent. Now the company is lobbying lawmakers to pass legislation that protects it from lawsuits stemming from the cancer causing product. Bayer is targeting Iowa, Idaho, and Missouri, where farmers rely heavily on Roundup to protect crops. Identical bills that would give Bayer immunity have been presented in each of those three. It passed in Iowa, was defeated in Idaho, and is awaiting debate in Missouri. And Bayer denies the claims. So $10.9 billion is a lot to settle for if you're denying these claims. And Bayer actually supplied wording for the bills in these three states. And I think this is such a case study in how corporations are far too interwoven with the people who make policy in the United States, just foregoing consumers of the, the products, the food grown in Idaho, Iowa, and Missouri. This isn't just about the people living in areas where the groundwater is affected and where you know they're coming into contact with this roundup. It's probably affecting everyone who's eating food from these places. And so to have the legislators of these states so in bed with the corporation that the corporation supplying wording for this piece of legislation that would protect them from lawsuits for a cancer causing product, it's really insanity. It's really terrifying. Right, and a lot of people use Roundup just on a personal basis too, to kill weeds in their lawn. And I mean, I'm sure plenty of people don't realize that they need to be wearing gloves, masks, personal protective equipment to the level that they need to be in order to protect themselves from the chemicals getting into their bloodstream. But um, it's a very, very popular product. And I think it's also worth pointing out that Bayer uh, purchased Monsanto in 2018 for $63 billion. And this is not the first time that the Roundup product has faced a lawsuit of this nature. It was actually RFK Jr. who was helping to litigate and prosecute Monsanto in the case of Dwayne Johnson, who accused Roundup of causing his non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. They ended up finding a, basically a bunch of people who had had the same thing happen to them, where they got very sick after using Roundup for a number of years. And in that case, uh, uh, a jury actually ordered Monsanto to pay $289 million in, comp um, in punitive damages to Dwayne Johnson because of the illness that he ended up developing from using this, uh, this Roundup as a groundskeeper for a number of years. Um, so it's pretty uh, you know, insane that Monsanto has to settle this lawsuit. They find out, or I mean, I'm sure they probably knew, allegedly they knew, that Roundup was dangerous. They pay this massive settlement. Then another company comes in and buys Monsanto and continues to put out Roundup. And now we're discovering that there are actually perhaps even more potential dangers beyond just the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, but other cancer issues that people have been developing from use of this product. And now we, of course, have this issue that you brought up, which is that it's in our food supply because this is a popular product used in the farming industry, the agricultural industry that could be getting into the water, into the food, et cetera. Really a nationwide problem, Jessica. Yeah, you also have uh, you know, Bayer producing this Roundup, which has been used for around 50 years, but it's used with genetically modified crops that are resistant to the killing effect that Roundup has. So things like corn, very popular, soybeans and cotton. And so it's, it's designed to work with these genetically modified crops, which people have various feelings about. But, you know, these are crops that we rely on. A lot of them are GMO seeds. And regardless of how you feel about that, if the Roundup itself is something that's causing cancer, what's the purpose of defending its, its use? Or rather, not even defending its use, because the legislation 
isn't preventing a ban on Roundup. It's preventing people from suing over getting cancer from it. So as a lawmaker, what's your stance here? How do the people benefit from a piece of legislation like this? That's a big question I have. And you have Republicans not really addressing that crucial point. They're saying things like this product ultimately is a, a tool that we need. In these states, you do have Republican controlled legislators. So I really want to hear from these politicians directly. Why are you doing this? And of course, you have Bayer with registered lobbyists in these states where they have a huge economic direct impact on life in this state in Iowa, in Idaho, and in Missouri. And in Missouri, we saw the amount of lobbyists more than double uh, in this past year before this legislation uh, was introduced in this state. And that's very concerning that you have politicians essentially being bought out by these lobbyists to do something that has no clear positive impact on the people living in the state, but a very clear positive impact economically for these corporations. Right, and, and back to this lawsuit I mentioned against Monsanto that RFK Jr. was involved in, I do want to point out that was reduced on appeal to $21 million, $21 million, but still obviously a substantial amount. And I think he is one of the few presidential candidates that really makes this a, a central part of his platform. He's talked about his desire to rebuild American soil, to get pesticides out of the food supply. Um, he said he would weaponize federal agencies to squeeze pesticides and herbicides out of U.S. farming practices. Um, he's one of, again, one of the few people that I've heard actually talk about this. To your point, I have not heard anyone in the legislatures in these states with this Bayer bill talking about it at all. And then we also have this PFAS or PFAS report, these forever chemicals that in addition to uh, testicular cancer can also cause breast and gynecological cancers which is new reporting. And we talked on this program, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, about how the PFAS uh, chemicals are also present in a lot of Band-Aid products from various different brands. So a lot of consumers are encountering these chemicals without even realizing it. I mean, I think it's one thing to use Roundup. You kind of know weed, weed killer is probably not great for you. You should probably wear protective equipment. Again, not everybody does because they might not realize just how dangerous it is. But if you're using a Teflon pan, most people are not informed of the fact that if they get a scratch on that pan, all of a sudden there's these chemicals in their food every single time that they cook with this product. And, uh, and, and cosmetics are listed here as well. I mean, people putting makeup on their face don't realize that there's chemicals in there that could be damaging to the skin barrier, could eventually cause cancer. There's a lot, a lot of lack of information that's going to the consumer so that they can make educated decisions about the products that they choose to use. And these companies seem to make it intentionally very cumbersome for consumers to understand the potential risk of using some of these products. Right, you also have this being almost a, a basic rights violation, right? In the United States, we have inalienable rights in the Constitution, the right to life being one of them. If a product gives you cancer and a legislator passes a law saying there's no legal recourse for you if this product used in your proximity or used by you gives you cancer and, and is a threat to your life, which cancer is in many cases, that if there's no legal recourse there, it's almost threatening your basic constitutional right of a right to life. There should be some challenge of this law in a very real way at the federal level in the highest court of the United States. This is something that should be taken very seriously. We're at the point where obviously there's this tension between protecting people's lives and protecting profit and that there's a calculation that's been made by some of the richest, most powerful people in the country that actually workers are expendable, consumers are expendable, and they're quite fine because they're they're profiting and these lawsuits are something that cuts into their revenue, cuts into their profit margins, which cuts into their personal money in their pockets. And I think most people think about human life as something that's not something that can be bought or sold. In the beginning of the pandemic, when we had this movement of really valuing essential workers, people doing the jobs that we need to stock the shelves that we need when we're sick and we go to the hospital, that these people are super valuable but their pay doesn't reflect that. How much they're valued economically in society is not something we've put a number on, but we have this gratitude for them. But I think it's time they have that same respect in terms of their legal rights, their ability to sue, 
if a corporation profits off of a product that risks their life. And imagine these workers in these factories. You have over 500 workers producing this glyphosate that's in the Roundup in Iowa, and I believe it's 800 in Idaho. What about those workers' right to sue? They're just trying to work for a living. And so I think people will really question corporate power in the United States in moments like this, where it's obvious that they're putting profits over people's lives. Right. Stories like this really cut against this libertarian impulse that corporations would never do things that are bad for their customer because it would hurt their bottom line because consumers wouldn't like it. Um, obviously, this is proving that that's not the case. Um, the Charles Koch Institute teaches its young fellows on this idea of good profit, which is that corporations are incentivized to only do things that are good for consumers because they will return in kind with continuing to buy their products. Um, and, and it seems like that uh, whole premise is very fundamentally flawed when we look at the way that corporations do behave in reality when they're actually faced with these economic decisions. We'll be back with more Rising after this.